from EMP generators to the top secret Project 112. These are seven strange military science projects. Number 7. The Demon Core On August 13, 1945, a third nuclear weapon was scheduled for release over Imperial Japan. We all know about Hiroshima and Nagasaki, but did you know that there was a third plutonium core manufactured and ready to go? The core for this bomb was a solid sphere, 3.5 inches in diameter, with a weight of 14 pounds, and it held enough energy to power an average US home for over 2,000 years. In other words, about 20 kilotons of TNT. On August 15, 1945, Imperial Japan surrendered. The third core was no longer needed to attack Japan anyway. When it was built, the scientists at Los Alamos wanted to make sure that it was 5% below critical mass, meaning that with the change of a key factor, the core would become critical. For example, compressing the core would cause it to explode. Scientists also added more nuclear material by using a reflector that would block outbound neutrons from leaving the core. At this point, you might be wondering how this core got its nickname. After all, it is called the Demon Core. The first incident occurred on August 21, 1945. A physicist working at Los Alamos was performing a neutron reflection test to make sure that the core was still close to critical mass. By stacking tungsten carbide bricks near the core, he could essentially control how close to explosion the core was. Well, he accidentally dropped one of them on top of the core. The core went into supercriticality, a self-sustaining critical chain reaction. But Daglian managed to quickly remove the bricks and stop the process. Unfortunately, human speed is nothing compared to the power of radiation. He died 25 days later from acute radiation syndrome. Not even a year later, on May 21, 1946, Louis Slotin, a man that was known for his bravado, was conducting a criticality test of his own. Let's look at this picture. The bottom and the top spheres were the neutron reflective material and the core was inside. A screwdriver was used to keep the two halves separate. If the top and bottom spheres closed completely, well, you know, supercritical and yada yada yada. While showing off his skills to seven other people, Louis Slotin's screwdriver slipped outward an inch. That was enough to close the gap. Slotin managed to remove the top half and stop the reaction. He died nine days later from acute radiation poisoning. Studies on the seven observants that were in the room showed that the radiation may have played a part in their deaths as well. As humans, we learn from our mistakes. It just sucks that sometimes people have to die for changes to take effect. After the second incident, criticality experiments were only performed by remote control machines a quarter mile away from any people. As for the Demon Core, it was ultimately scrapped after not meeting safety standards for use in Operation Crossroads. Number 6. HVRC Officially known as the Istra High Voltage Research Center, this facility has the largest known Marx generator. I know it sounds scary, but Marx generators have been used by many governments and private companies to simulate the effects of lightning on airplanes, fighter jets, and power lines. The generator at the Istra facility is powerful enough to generate 500 foot long lightning bolts. The facility was built sometime in the 70s. It was most likely used to test military fighter jets. Fun fact. Boris Yeltsin, the first president of the Russian Federation, was a construction supervisor for some parts of this research center. Since the 90s, the location hasn't been completely shut down. The last known use was in 2014, so don't think you can just wander around the area without being noticed. Number 5. Project 112 between 1962 and 1973, the United States Department of Defense experimented with biological and chemical weapons. Project 112 was part of a bigger operation dedicated to totally reviewing the U.S. military. It wouldn't be a shady Cold War project without the involvement of the CIA as well. The experiments began as soon as JFK signed the paperwork. It doesn't sound too bad on the surface, right? It's good to know what the effects of these weapons of mass destruction are. Releasing biological agents like sarin, VX and tear gas. A notable effect of VX, which stands for Venomous Agent X, is severe disruption of your nervous and muscular system, leading to paralysis and asphyxiation. 
Some trials were conducted in the secure Porton Down facility in the UK, which has been accused of doing tests on human subjects. There is evidence that some trials were conducted around the town of Ralston in Canada. Perhaps the worst aspect of Project 112 were the shipboard hazard and defense tests. These tests were meant to expose chemical and biological warfare vulnerabilities of U.S. warships. And yes, there were people on those ships, around 5,500 test subjects, to be more exact. If you were riding the New York subway system between June 7th and 10th, 1966, there is a high probability that you were exposed to BG bacteria, which is, quotation mark, harmless, simulant of its super deadly cousin, anthrax. The experiments showed that just dropping a few light bulbs filled with real anthrax would have caused a city-wide epidemic. The government denied the existence of Project 112 for decades, the sad part is, we may never know the full extent of the project, how many people were affected, or if it's still happening. Considering there is information that the US government conducted testing outside of the US because it was deemed too unethical, I can't begin to imagine the true nature and effects of Project 112. Number 4. Letyashtia Atomnia Laboratoria before I translate the name of this Russian project, can you guess what it stands for? Comment below right now and don't cheat. Russian officials wanted to try out something new and a little crazy. A flying atomic lab. Meaning a plane that was powered by a nuclear reactor. Yes, that's right, a flying nuclear power plant. It all began with the Tupolev Tu-95 a Soviet bomber aircraft. It was the perfect candidate for nuclear power. The Russian government managed to fit the bomber with a nuclear reactor and the plane amassed 40 test flights. At the same time, the United States was also developing a nuclear bomber from the Convair B-36 body. They called it the Convair NB-36H. Before we go any further, both the Russian and American versions of these planes were fitted with nuclear reactors. Both planes had many test flights, and both planes were never actually powered by the nuclear reactor. The test phase was more concerned with shielding the rest of the plane from radiation and minimizing the environmental impact. So what happened? Intercontinental ballistic missiles happened. As it turns out, those were much more effective and destructive than any bomber could ever be. So what did we learn from this? Most importantly, Half of you probably cheated on that translation. Number 3. Project Ice Swarm The US government took great interest in the Greenland area starting in the 1960s. The US already had Thule Air Base in Greenland, which helped build trust with the Danish government. Under the guise of an above-ground project nicknamed Camp Century, underground work on Project Ice Swarm began in 1961. Project Ice Swarm was supposed to have over 600 nukes hidden within 2,500 miles of tunnels. See, I thought the whole idea behind nuclear weapons is the ability to show them off and to deter any country from attacking you. It looks like this project was more of a last screw you to the USSR more than anything else. If there were hundreds of nuclear warheads headed towards our known nuclear warhead locations, it would be nice to just send another 600 or so flying their way. Didn't see that coming, did ya? Not that any of this matters, since a thermonuclear war will completely destroy our world as we know it. So how did this all end? Well, it turns out that ice moves slowly, but surely. This meant that the tunnels and operation rooms would shift over time and could lose structural integrity. In 1966, the project was abandoned completely. The US government thought that all the work completed at Camp Century would be forever covered by ice. But current trends of ice sheets melting suggest that everything might be exposed within the next century. Number 2. Operation Fishbowl At the same time that we were learning how to bury nuclear weapons in Greenland, a massive operation was happening in the Pacific Ocean. Starfish Prime was a test conducted under the umbrella of Operation Fishbowl. Let's look at the bigger picture first. Operation Fishbowl was a series of high-altitude nuclear tests and was part of the larger Operation Dominic test program. The first test conducted in Operation Fishbowl was dubbed Blue Gill. The missile was destroyed before detonating. 
Next up, we had Starfish. After 59 seconds of flight, the rocket engine of the Thor missile failed, and due to safety concerns, the missile and warhead were destroyed before detonation. Then, the Starfish Prime test occurred, otherwise known as the largest nuclear test in outer space. The Thor missile was launched from the Johnston Atoll on July 9, 1962. It flew to an altitude of 250 miles, and the 1.4 megaton TNT explosion was visible from a 1,000 mile radius. This is how the Starfish Prime bomb looked from Honolulu, some 900 odd miles away. The auroral effect covered a vast region of the Pacific Ocean. The after effects of the blast were serious. About one third of all satellites in low Earth orbit were disabled. Reports suggest that the electrons from Starfish Prime could be found five years after the blast. Number 1 Atlas 1 the Air Force Weapons Lab Transmission Line Aircraft Simulator, more often referred to as Tressel, was the hotbed for EMP generation and testing in the USA. EMPs are electromagnetic pulses. They can be caused by natural things like lightning and solar bursts from our sun. Leave it up to humanity to figure out a way to weaponize this, right? After 60 million spent, the US Air Force finally had the strongest, baddest, biggest, largest, non-nuclear electromagnetic pulse generator. This technology allowed them to test the effects of EMPs on airplanes and aircraft equipment. Tressel is also the biggest structure in the world that is built from wood and glue laminate. Check out the featured comment below, subscribe for more World on Earth, and I'll see you in the next video.